I'm going to be speaking about a book project uh, conducted with Guillermo Cruces, uh, David Home, Mariana Villas. Um, the book is entitled, I'll show you the cover of it, Growth, Employment, and Poverty in Latin America. It was published last year based on a number of wider working papers. And um, of those working papers, most of them are country-specific studies. And then we have one lengthy cross-country working paper, which became a number of chapters in the book. The, the work is um, motivated by uh, a previous book of mine entitled Working Hard, Working Poor. And Working Hard, Working Poor was an attempt to bring together some of the things we know from around the developing world about how people are working. And one of the things we learned from that is that people, in fact, are working. Their uh, unemployment in the developing world is very low. The issue is what uh, I like to call the employment problem in Latin America and Africa and Asia, which is that people, although they are working, earn so little for uh, each hour of work that even if they work very long hours, they end up being poor, hence the title, Working Hard, Working Poor. And so uh, of concern to me moving forward from this previous book was the question of um, what can be done to improve the material well-being of people like these who you see uh, on, the, on the cover of the book. Uh, uh, that is, not just them, but people like them, li the literally uh, uh, billions of people who are, fall, into the, fall into the category of being, uh, being low-income in people. And in particular, would economic growth help improve their material well-being over time? I personally am interested in the entire developing world, but uh, to do a comprehensive study of all of the countries in the world, would, uh, developing countries of the world, would be uh, an impossibly large task. Happily, in Latin America, there is the SEDLOC database, which we just heard about from Carlos, and it, the, this is, these are harmonized data sets that are, uh, here it is, that based on 150 household surveys, 5 million households, 18 million people, and uh, uh, they, have, they have been harmonized in the sense that the uh, data are in comparable format. And so once you decide to study one country uh, and write the code for it, you can study uh, all of the countries within, within the database. And this was a great opportunity to learn what had happened in Latin America. Well, I'll tell you what my hypotheses were. And uh, uh, the good news is that my hypotheses turned out to be, uh, to be wrong. My hypothesis was Latin America, as you also heard just now from Carlos, is way up there with Africa as being uh, tied for the lead in terms of uh, inequality within the region. And what worried me and what worries other people a lot is the possibility that in a high inequality region, what would, what would happen when economic growth takes place is that those who have the economic power and who have the political power at the top of the distribution uh, would capture large shares of the gains of economic growth. And those who uh, are um, in the middle class and uh, lower classes um, might capture very little. In fact, um, I was extremely pessimistic because of my own country, the United States. And in the United States, uh, we have had the remarkable record, exceptionally bad, that uh, economic growth has taken place. Wages on average, that is mean wages in real terms, have grown in the United States year after year after year. And yet, uh, median wages and the wages, uh, uh, median wages of workers, median wages of full-time, full-year workers, I should say labor earnings, not hourly wages, um, that, the, that the middle has stagnated, the lower part of the distribution has stagnated. You, get, you have to get on up to about the top 10% before you start seeing large earnings creep. Increases. So my hypothesis for Latin America was that what we would find there would be that there would that there would be gains in earnings concentrated uh, at at the top. 
Well, you heard from Carlos just now that that was not what happened in Latin America. In our book, that's, not, that's what we also found did not happen in Latin America. So from that point of view, of course, it depends on one's value judgments. To me, that's very good news, that, the, that working people actually benefited and benefited a lot. I'm not going to be talking about inequality of labor earnings as much as I am going to be talking about the changes that took place in labor markets. So what we have, um, here are the, the, the three questions uh, on growth, employment, and poverty in Latin America. Has economic growth resulted in economic development, by which I mean people attaining higher material standards of living? Has it resulted in those higher material standards of living via improved labor market conditions in our period of analysis, which is the 2000s, literally starting in the year 2000 and going up to what was most recently available at the time we began our study, which in most countries were was uh, uh, data from 2012-2013. Uh, had were these improvements halted or reversed si uh, since during and since the Great Recession of 2008? And how do the rate and character of economic growth, the changes in employment and earnings indicators, and changes in poverty and inequality indicators relate to each other? And so. Uh, the analytical framework, I hesitant to, I, I'm hesitant to call it an analytical framework, but anyhow, a, uh, a schema that, that helps, helps me think about this is uh, what I've called here a policy action. Actually, it might be better to call it some kind of impetus, like economic growth or external events or something else. And, and if growth or other uh, economic events or, or uh, other events uh, affect outcomes of, of people, there, are, there has to be some transmission channel by which growth, if it takes place, gets transmitted to people in the form of higher earnings and better labor market opportunities. If that transmission, transmission channel is blocked, we could end up with what the United States has, which uh, average uh, workers not gaining uh, in earnings and being pretty angry about it. Uh, and I'm not going to make any further political uh, hints uh, than what I just did. Uh, the other major channel for linking growth and other uh, uh, external uh, other, other events to poverty and other outcome variables would be would be social programs. Um, and so the the question then is, that we focus on is what is what happens via the labor market via the employment channel, and so. Uh, we use the SEDLAC uh, 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 database, and uh, from that database, we use a number of, uh, uh, of indicators for 16 Latin American countries. They're grouped, uh, one is uh, as an indicator of labor market conditions, the unemployment rate. Um, the unemployment rate is not a good indicator of uh, changes in labor market conditions, but it's the one that people usually start with. We have a number of indicators of the type of work that people are doing, what occupations they're in, what their employment status is, uh, which sectors do they work in, what education levels do they have, and are they registered with the social security system, which is a somewhat country-specific definition, such as in Argentina, are you uh, registered with the pension system or not? And uh, we use those as, uh, as other indicators of employment and earnings. We look at real monthly labor earnings uh, on average for workers as a whole and for um, broken down uh, by, uh, by uh, different demographic and uh, uh, economic groupings. We look at the poverty rates uh, and how they changed over time. Uh, we have data on the Gini coefficient. I'm not going to say anything more about it than, other than the fact that it is included as one of, our, one of our indicators. And so our analysis started by taking these 16 indicators. For some of them, like, the un, uh, like um, labor market earnings, uh, higher labor market earnings are, are generally regarded as a good thing. Uh, higher unemployment is generally regarded as a bad thing. And so what we did is that for the ones that are, that are uh, where an increase is judged negatively, um, we just simply put a minus sign in front of it in order to be able to take then an, uh, an index uh, that we begin with, which is of the 16 indicators, how many of them changed in the welfare increasing uh, direction. So um, 
We have then, looking at the, at the overall period, uh, we, we have data on these changing indicators for Latin America as a whole, and then for countries within Latin America. Starting with Latin America as a whole, uh, these are the changes that, that we found. Uh, I'm colorblind, so I'm not going to refer to the blue or the red or whatever, because I'm not sure that they are blue or red. Uh, but the one that goes up is GDP per capita. Uh, and uh, so economic growth took place in the region as a whole. Of the various indicators that I just mentioned to you, the unemployment rate went down in Latin America since the year uh, 2000. Um, whoops, what happened here? There. Um, mean labor earnings grew in Latin America. The $4 a day poverty headcount, which is the lowest poverty line used in, in a middle income region like Latin America, fell substantially. When we look country by country and see what happens, what happened to economic growth, some rapidly growing countries, some slow growing countries, others in the middle, but the ones in the middle uh, are, uh, did better so that overall Latin America had, had more economic growth than did OECD countries or than did the United States. If we look at the changes in labor market indicators, and this is that summary index, just take the 16 indicators, uh, did each of those indicators increase in a country, for each of those indicators, did it increase in the country or not? This is the percentage of improving indicators. You see that uh, if we take the 5 eighths mark, which is so 10 indicators out of 16, all countries uh, except for Honduras had uh, the in increases of uh, in that number of, of indicators. If we uh, go up to 75%, uh, most of the countries are, uh, ha had those indicators improving as well. So in general, Latin America was, uh, Im was uh, improving in its labor market indicators and uh, helping to achieve um, solutions to its employment problem. We then uh, performed cross-country analysis of the link between growth and employment and poverty and asked the question, did the countries with higher rates of economic growth experience larger improvements in labor market indicators? Um, the answer is a very mixed one. So the percentage of uh, indicators that were improving re related to uh, the growth rate of GDP per capita uh, Yes, there's an upward sloping line there, but the R squared is only 0.1. So clearly what this is saying is that more than economic growth is involved in looking at what is, uh, uh, what is happening with respect to uh, the uh, indicators as a whole. If we look at the growth of labor earnings, this is quite remarkable. This is an effective zero. And so it says that labor earnings are, uh, are increasing. Uh, but the, the increase is not linked uh, very closely to the growth rate of GDP per capita. Nor is um, the poverty reduction linked closely to the growth rate of GDP per capita. What, it's, what, it, what the, the, the change in um, growth is linked more closely to is the share of workers registered with the social security system, what some people would call formalization taking place. And so we find that there are, are these links, but they're not very tight when we look across countries. So that takes us beyond economic growth. And what we, uh, what we wanted to do there was to see if there was anything that was tied in uh, closely with variables, uh, that is variables other than economic growth tied into the uh, changes in employment or the changes in, in poverty? The answer was not really, that there are country-specific things that are going on. And it really is a, is a country-specific story. It's a, it's a story of this country decided to do this. And it uh, decided to do something, uh, partly for political reasons, partly for uh, um, social reasons. Uh, and there are these other factors at work. So, Let's see, don't need that. Okay, next question was, what is the link between employment and poverty? 
And uh, are the larger improvements in employment and earnings indicators associated with larger reductions in poverty? This is, so this is then the question. If poverty is going down, uh, to what extent is it linked to um, employment uh, labor market variables? And if so, which ones? And so uh, these are the correlations between the change in poverty over the observation period 2000 up to approximately 2012 linked to each of the indicators one by one. And so the variable that is most closely linked to poverty reduction with a, with a, a, a uh, a co correlation coefficient of 0.88, which is extremely high, is the increase in mean labor earnings. What that's saying is that the poverty rate was falling in Latin American, in Latin American countries, in large part because uh, of workers earning more for the work they do. Now, what else might have been responsible for the fall in poverty that, uh, within the labor market. It might have been unemployment, but the correlation between the change in poverty and the unemployment rate, the change in unemployment, was much lower. Then there are these things in the middle. Uh, these correlations are pretty substantial. And so the change in the types of jobs that people are working in uh, do have a role to play, but not as much as the fact that they're earning more wherever it is they're working in the labor market. And that's, uh, that's what we found there. Um, OK, so this is, I think, the single most important um, uh, empirical finding we have. And that is, if we look across the countries, that the correlation between uh, the R square, between the change in labor, labor earnings and the change in poverty, uh, R squared to 0.78 is enormous, uh, I think. And uh, again, what it's saying then is that poverty is being reduced in these Latin American countries uh, um, through labor market earnings. And the larger is the increase in labor market earnings, the greater is the poverty reduction. In other words, the, the labor markets are transmitting the economic growth that's taking place through higher earnings to lower poverty. And that's my, that's my summary. All right, I'll, uh, there are lower um, uh, correlations, lower associations with uh, um, change in poverty and other variables like the uh, growth of wage and salaried employment. It is a pretty substantial correlation, but not as high as with earnings. And so across countries then, what we have found is that the, there are some pretty strong associations, some lesser ones, uh, but labor market earnings and poverty is the strongest link we find. OK, we have growth incidence curves. And the growth incidence curves depict what happens then within the income distribution. We, we constructed standard um, uh, growth incidence curves in which the vertical axis is the percentage change in um, in, um, in incomes in each of the 10 deciles. Here are some selected uh, growth incidence curves. And you see that a number of them are downward sloping. Downward sloping growth incidence curve indicates that the highest percentage changes were taking place in the uh, bottom end of the income distribution in a number of countries, but not in all of them. And so it's a whole other study. And Carlos just reported on such a study of why, the, why some of these patterns are what they are. And so I just wanted to show you that in our research. We were concerned not only with uh, mean changes in, uh, in labor earnings, but also uh, the, the changes across the income distribution. I'll skip this part on the crisis. The crisis was still a hot issue when we began this research uh, four years ago. And now people have more or less forgotten about it. So we'll move on beyond that. Uh, and the final remark that I want to make, uh, I don't need to summarize, I think. This has been a short enough presentation. So you've gotten our main messages. But what I do want to say is that what this does is that it augments uh, Bourguignon's triangle. So Bourguignon had put forward a poverty growth inequality triangle in which he said, uh, do, the, do the results of his study imply that growth has no significant impact on, uh, he says, distribution, I would say, inequality. He, Bourguignon says, certainly not. Uh, the results mean that there are, there's too much country specificity in the way growth may affect distribution for any generalization to be possible. And our results are fully consistent with that. 
He goes on, indeed, case studies show that distributional changes in a given country have much to do with the pace and structural features of economic growth in the period under analysis. And what our research adds to that is to say uh, everything he, we agree with everything he said, and we would add that, uh, the, uh, that these case studies indicate that the pattern uh, linking growth and poverty is mediated through labor markets. And so this leads to a call for more labor market research um, in Latin America, but also studies like this in other parts of the world, because we don't know what the story is for, uh, for Asia, for uh, Africa. I would love to know it if somebody did it, but I think I've uh, burnt myself out in, in uh, doing this kind of research for, for other countries. That said, we're about to hear about from one uh, African country right now. Uh, and th so I, uh, I will step down 